I'm speaking to you from our picket line here at Euston. We're hoping to speak to the people in the building behind us uh, very soon. Uh, talks collapsed yesterday with Network Rail. Uh, despite briefings to the press, there was going to be an offer of 4%. We still haven't received any offer, Julia. You haven't? Uh, this, no, so you had, wait, no you had three hours of talks and you didn't actually discuss percentages? There's been no proposal made to us at this point beyond the... Uh, Proposal we got last week, which we rejected for 2% and another 1% for selling all our terms and conditions. Okay. Uh, so we asked them to remove the threat of redundancies yesterday, Julia, and they said they don't have the authority to do it. Now, I don't know who else has got the authority to tell the top directors in Network Rail they can't make a deal with the RMT, but their master's in the DFT. So you're saying that Grant Shapps, the Transport Secretary, or Number 10, they're the people who are the puppet masters and they need to be at the talks. The reality is that's not going to happen. Um, yesterday, uh, your boss, Mick Lynch, uh, accused the Transport Secretary of wrecking the strike talks. He's hit back saying that's a total lie. In what way do you think that the Transport Secretary has wrecked the talks? Well, the people that we're negotiating, negotiating with take their mandate from the Department of Transport. They tell us in the room that they regard themselves as brokers and not negotiators. Uh, and when we're speaking to them, they have to go back and check uh, and refresh their mandate uh, all of the time. Now, I've got people I'm negotiating with and ministers briefing it, people in the press saying that they can uh, get through the changes they need without making people compulsory redundant. But they refuse to make that offer to the trade union sat across the table from them uh, whose members are out on strike. Now, if they can make that proposal to the press, I don't see why they can't make it to us. It makes no sense. With millions of people facing more disruption today, look, we've seen disruption since Monday night strikes, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. In fact, yeah. actually, a lot of people's you know, journeys completely wrecked from Monday night onwards all the way through to Sunday. It's people trying to get to Glastonbury, people trying to get to work um, and, and go on holiday. It's, it's been a disaster for an awful lot of people. Um, yeah. You had three hours in talks yesterday. If you're saying they didn't make any offer to make any change and you're not budging from your seven percent what the hell did you talk about for three hours did you the, the bourbon biscuits and, well, this, and whether or not you had tea or coffee what were you talking about well i don't know where this seven percent has come from we have never asked for seven percent we've not put any figure on that what we asked for yesterday was for them to remove that they issued us with a letter last week starting a legal process on compulsory redundancies for our members we asked them to remove that letter so we can get on and settle a deal. Right, Eddie. So Eddie, can I interrupt? We've got you on, Eddie. We've got you on camera, but you switched. You you sh you've shuffled to the side. Can I get you back in the middle of the camera so we can actually see your face? Right. My love? Yeah, That's oh, much pardon, better. Now we can see it in all its glory. <laughs> yeah, so they, uh, we we asked for them to remove the threat of redundancies yesterday. Yeah. And they said they don't have the authority. So we're going to go back and try again today. Okay. Uh, we haven't said said seven percent, Julia, but you have to appreciate. Everywhere that we're not dealing with a company controlled by the DFT, we've got a deal. Eight and a half percent in London Underground, 9.2 Docklands Light Railway, another good deal in Crossrail, 7.1 in Mersey Rail. We're making deals everywhere. The only place we're not making deals is anywhere that the DFT's in charge. OK, and is, and is that, do you think, because actually if we do see you getting a, whether it's close to inflation or inflation busting um, pay rise, yeah, great for your members, completely understand why they would want to do that as individuals, uh, but that could actually lead to a whole host of pay demands from other unions, a whole set of strikes, a summer of discontent, all of that, and the government's trying to ward that off. Or, or, do, or do you think that, suppose, you know, we literally as a country we can't afford to have tens of thousands hundreds of thousands ultimately across the public sector millions getting those sort of pay rises because we simply can't afford it i'll tell you what julia they seem they soon stop worrying about pay rises when it's their mates in the banks with their bonuses don't they uh, they're very worried about us getting a pay rise, but they're all right for their mates in the banks getting them. But, and they're all right for the private but companies the, getting but, their profits. But their mates in the... I'm, I'm with you on the private companies making profits. Rail companies getting £16 billion bailouts, including my taxpayers' money and my listeners and my viewers, and then paying off profits to their shareholders. I think most of us are pretty peed off about, frankly. Yeah. But what a private bank pays its, pays its chief exec or its top dealers, it's not my problem because I'm not paying for it. Well, the railways have always been subsidised. You've been paying for private profits in the rail industry since they were privatised. Yeah, Ten no. billion has gone through our industry. 
Yeah, that's I just, know. That's, but but right well, now, how, exactly. How right now, we're you subsidising your there, pay. There's no money for workers. Okay. And I think there will be more wage. There will be more demands for higher wages, uh, and that's because wages have been falling in this country for 30 years. Okay. And I say, good on the teachers. More power to their elbow. Let's get the posties on as well. Let's get the health workers out. And let's all get a decent pay rise for people in this country. Look, I think... Pay rises, pay, wages have got to go up and profits have got to come down. There, is an, there are an awful lot of people who will agree with you that individual workers shouldn't have to be putting up with having a pay cut in real terms by not getting a pay rise. Actually, it comes even close to inflation. There'll be a lot of people listening and watching go, yeah, fair dues, I'd be in the same position, I'd do the same. However, you know as well as I do, if you win this... And then all the other unions to go on strike as well, and we have it across the board. Fourteen billion pound cost. If we let's give it that seven percent figure. That's a fourteen billion pound cost of coffers. That's going to come out of taxpayers' pockets. That's saying your members included having to pay for that. We're going to be looking at spiralling costs for everywhere because the private sector is going to be demanding as well. You've got all those extra costs going up. That means that everything in the shops is going to go up more as well. We're all going to end up paying more. We get spiralling inflation, and then that pay rise isn't actually worth what you think it is. Is there an argument that for the better good. What's that? Look, if wages don't go up, the taxpayer will foot the bill through benefits for workers who can't afford to live. We have got millions of people in in work benefits. That is a scandal. We're subsidising profits of companies who don't want to pay a fair wage. Now, I say let's take the wage system off of the public purse and let's make the people who are earning the profits out of people working, let's make them pay a decent wage. Let's get pay rises for people in this country they can live on. What's wrong with that? That's modern, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, I think a lot of people agree with that. But they also question your motives, Mick Lynch's motives. I mean, you're, you know, isn't he a card-carrying member of the Communist Party? That actually, you know, talking about this as class... No, 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 let me, fin- let me no, finish. No. Talking about this as class warfare. So you can think, yeah, your individual aims for individual members, yes. However... Are you not also motivated by, you know, you want to bring down a nasty, evil Tory government, uh, you want to see class warfare, you want a summer of discontent, mass strikes. A lot of people are questioning some of the motives behind this for your for your uh, union. Well, this it, it, is just hilarious. I'm, I'm a card-carrying communist when I want to pay rise for my members. Was I a card-carrying communist when I campaigned to leave the European Union? I'm celebrating Brexit Day just the same as you, Julia. <laughs> I never are thought... You, it... Have you got your card? Are you a card-carrying communist too? <laughs> no, but I'm also not a member of a union because, unfortunately, the NUJ is basically a, a, a socialist organisation doesn't suit my aims. Let me ask you about some of these... Um, pra- we're told antiquated practices that union wants, it, wants to, uh, uh, to keep and the, uh, the bosses want to get rid of as part of this deal. So they're saying they'll give you a pay rise... Would, I know it would be in real terms of pay cut, but there's a question of like some redundancies, compulsory or otherwise. We'll just see how that works out. But also changing working practices. So, yeah, you've got to work at weekends. You've got to do shift patterns. Things like we're told, just things like sharing a van, uh, using Zoom, not having to restart a lunch break if you happen to have a boss speak to you uh, during your lunch break. Is that all true or is that a load of nonsense? It's a load, it's a, it's a, look, it's a load of old cobblers, Julia. Imagine, how would we run a railway if you had to restart a break? every time your governor says hello. It's just a joke. Look, our members are some of the most flexible workers in any industry. We work 24-7, shifts around the clock. Uh, in Network Rail, our terms and conditions were set in 2012. We worked 39 weeks of night shifts, 39 full weekend shifts, another 65 uh, weekend shifts, uh, and we got permanent nights. I mean, how much more flexibility can you get? We would have to invent another day in a week to achieve more flexibility. It's all <laughs> absolute rubbish. How do you think this is going to end? It's going to end when we get a proposal that protects our members' uh, job security and gets them a reasonable pay rise. We're not asking for the world. We don't think that's unachievable. They use the word mon- modernisation. It's like a euphemism, Julia. What they mean is uh, you'll be poorer, uh, and that's if you're lucky if you've got a job. What I think is modern is you go to work and you get paid a wage you can live on. And I'd like a modern department for transport with a minister in it who knows what he's talking about. Right, well, we'll put that to Grant Shapps next time we talk to him. Can I have another wave from the picket line for every, to all the talk radio and talk, uh, talk TV yeah. listeners and watch? Hello? <laughs> well, they're looking well, quite well. cheery. Thank you very much. That's Eddie Dempsey, Senior Assistant General Secretary of the RMT.